my friends. Welcome to The Sweater with Kathleen Dames, episode two. Today we'll be talking about the yarn. I'm Kathleen Dames and I'll be your guide over our 12 episode season of knitting the Solstice Cardi together. So today we are talking about the yarn. And uh, I showed you the yarn last time that I will be using. It is this beautiful round table yarns uh, Camelot base in the Orkney colorway from my friend Karen. And um, if you haven't gotten your yarn yet, definitely check out her stuff. Beautiful colors, a bunch of different fingering weight bases that would work. Um, just wonderful stuff. So uh, as far as yarn goes, we're looking at fingering weight yarn, um, around 100 grams per skein, 100 grams, 400 yards. Um, of course, I'm just mixing imperial and metric. Uh, four ounces, um, oh, around 390 meters. I may have that wrong, but but in that range, fingering weight yarn is going to match or allow you to be able to match gauge. And for gauge, we're looking at six stitches and eight rows to the inch. So that's that's what we're talking about today is gauge, getting gauge and how important gauge is to knitting a sweater that fits. So the first thing you have is your yarn. Let me pull out some yarn again, the yarn. The next thing you need are, oh, sorry, some needles. I pulled out three different needles. I have a lot of US six needles for some reason. <laughs> But the thing is that I have three totally different kinds of needles here. And we'll start with this one is, um, it's a metal needle. They're all long circulars. Some are longer than others. And I've been using metal a lot lately. I used to use plastic more and I really like the way it feels in the hand. It's kind of soft. However, it has more drag on it and that can affect your gauge. Um, this really comes into play more if you are swatching with one needle and knitting with another because there are little changes and it can be a, you know, even a fraction of a stitch over 40 inches is going to be a lot more than a fraction. It's going to be quite a few stitches. So the main three kinds of needles we have are wood or bamboo, metal, and plastic. And most of the time these days, people are going to be knitting with uh, metal or wood or uh, bamboo. And um, Addy turbos or other metal needles are called turbos for a reason. They're fast, they're slick, um, your yarn slides right along it, and that can be great, but it's not always going to be right for you. If you're more comfortable with wood, go with wood. Please don't worry about what kind of needle I'm using or somebody else is using. You should use the needle that makes you happy, that's comfortable in your hands, and then of course that gets you close to gauge. Um, hopefully gets you gauge. All right, so we've got the needles and the yarn. Um, and then we have to swatch. Now I swatched flat because we are knitting this piece flat, right? We knit it back and forth so that it can, so that it can be unbuttoned and, and worn, uh, <laughs> so it being open and closed like a cardigan. That's what a cardigan is, right? If you swatch in the round, your gauge can be a little different. Um, and that's not gonna help you. What you wanna do, whatever you're knitting, is knit in the way that you're going to be producing the actual sweater. So when I'm doing a pullover, I do my gauge in the round, either with DPNs or um, I may make a little hat on a smaller, or on, I wouldn't use a smaller needle, I use the same needle but do magic loop. Um, but if you have a small needle and a larger needle, you could do that too. As long as they're the same sort of surface, then you get the same experience of how your yarn moves along the needles. Uh, let's see, what else do we wanna know about swatching? Um, what I did here, I started, I, I like to do a full on swatch properly with you know, a garter stitch border so that it lays flat and smooth. The other great thing is with this one, we're doing this integrated button band in the cardigan. And so I practiced my integrated buttonholes um, as I was going along. And the nice thing about that is then you can go get your buttons anytime. Now that you know approximately how big your buttonholes are gonna be, 
you can go buy buttons without having to finish the sweater, without having to take the sweater with you. Um, some of the places I go to buy buttons, they don't like you carrying around big bags of stuff like my knitting bag. And so it's great that you can um, go with your little swatch and find the right buttons for you. So I could tell pretty early on that the yarn I was using and the needle I was using, I was getting slightly larger than gauge. And I wasn't sure, so I didn't pull it out. Um, I did a couple of inches and then I did a garter ridge and I switched needles. And this is a nice way I can tell. I started with a six and then I ended up with a five. And I'm gonna be using a five uh, for, my, for my new sweater. And um, the garter ridge just allows you to know exactly where you've switched needle sizes. But this also, this works pretty well. I mean, really I should have done a four inch swatch in the first needle and then in the second needle, but I was getting a little antsy. And um, I think for the row gauge, I can tell over two inches how close I am. And then of course I'm planning to do um, another, essentially a gauge swatch of my first sleeve. And that's what we'll talk about next episode. Um, we can tell, you know, a sleeve is longer and that's a great time to check your row gauge. So in regards to yarn, I wanna encourage you to buy not buy the most expensive yarn, but buy the best yarn that you can afford. Buy yarn that makes you happy um, because then you'll really enjoy knitting your project. You know, if you're like, oh, I should just use this yarn that I already have or this yarn because it was cheap, then you're gonna end up with a cheap sweater and you deserve better than a cheap sweater. You deserve to have a sweater that you love. And if my experience with the sweater is anything to go by, you will wear this sweater all the time. It's, it's a very simple sweater, it kind of goes with everything. It's great to throw on and have handy all the time. So knit something that you're gonna love and start with something you're, you love because that will make you excited and want you to keep going with it. Because there are a lot of stitches in a sweater. There's, there's no getting around that fact, okay? For substituting yarn, uh, I, like I said, we're doing fingering weight yarn. You wanna look at um, first the category of yarn, you know, they're from lace weight through bulky. We're doing fingering yarn, which is usually a number two on the CYCA guidelines. But within those guidelines, there is a wide range. So you wanna look at yardage or meterage and um, how much it weighs. And when you look at those, if you look at around 100 grams to 100 and, 15 grams and you're getting about 400 yards or 390-ish meters, then you know you're in the right zone and that's gonna help you a lot. Um, generally, we're, we're doing sock yarn and usually sock yarn is put up in those kind of four ounce, around 400 gram skeins. Um, and then I talked some about fiber composition last episode. Uh, but I'll, I'll sort of reiterate, we, I'm doing wool. It's a wool blend. It's got a little bit of nylon and a little bit of cashmere. So it's softer and stronger than straight up wool. D but they're all different kinds of wools. So you may want to experiment with that. Um, Sheepspot has, does great breed specific yarns. And there are plenty of other yarn dyers out there who are experimenting with blends and um, different fiber makeups. So I, I encourage you to check those out. It's always exciting to try a new to you yarn in this case. But also if you want, you can go stash diving. This would be a great project. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of yarn. It's basically like two socks worth to four socks worth, four pairs of socks worth of yarn. So along with my encouragement that you try wool, I just wanna say, you can do a yarn like Cotton Fine that has wool and cotton. It will be a little different. It'll act a little differently. Um, like I said last time, I think if you do a wool one this time and you love the pattern and you want to knit it again, then it would be a great time to experiment with how a linen or a cotton would work for you in that instance. And the last thing, of course, is spin. Um, the way a yarn is spun can affect uh, the, the fabric, the drape, how it, um, just how it feels in the hands. Uh, Stella is a multiply yarn, as is um, Camelot. There's nothing wrong with using a single ply. Just know that it can be a little, it can get a little fuzzier. When you have multiple plies, they kind of hold each other together. And um, 
But if you fall in love with a yarn that's a single ply, that's okay. Give it a go. You're the boss of your knitting and you want to be happy with it. I have knit plenty of sweaters in single ply yarn and I do love them. So there's nothing wrong with going single ply, multi ply. But if you, the best chance for success, if you are a new knitter, was probably to go with a multi ply just because it's a little more um, straightforward. So swatching. Um, not only do you want to consider flat versus in the round, we're going to swatch flat, which is easier, at least for me. I um, don't have to do any fiddling. Then you want to make sure to make it big enough. I know, I know, you just, you just want to get through it and well, get on to the fun knitting, right? But a big enough swatch gives you better information. If you knit only a four inch swatch, you, the honestly, the stitches at the beginning and the end get a little bunched up, a little weird, a little wonky, and you're not getting as accurate a measurement of your stitches. So make it a little bigger. If you're aiming for what we're aiming for now is 24 stitches over four inches, right? I think I cast on 30 stitches. Actually, no, I cast on 40. So that I will have 30, actually I had 28 stitches in stockinette, and then I had my garter stitch edges so that I could practice my buttonholes and also it makes for a flat swatch. So I'm gonna measure here and I'm gonna have space with a few stitches on either side so that I'm not, so that I'm getting a really accurate measurement. You can go even bigger, but then I think you start to get annoyed and you start to resent your swatch and we don't want that to happen. So definitely at least four inches. I really would say make a five inch swatch and then you know that you can get your swatch measured in the meat of your swatch and really know where you're at. And then, okay, after you have given the time to swatching, I know, I know you're so anxious. And um, this took me, I think, Downton Abbey plus a little more last night. And, um, but after you, after you make your swatch, you need to block it. Unless you're never planning to wash your sweater, you really want to make sure you gently wash your swatch the way you plan to wash your sweater and then leave it alone overnight. Okay, I know, I know it's hard, but leave it alone overnight, let it dry, let it dry naturally. We're not doing lace here. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to pin it out too big. That can affect your measuring of your gauge. Um, just leave it alone, let it be and then come back the next day and then you can accurately, honestly measure it. And that's what, again, you know, we talked last time about measuring your body. You want to be honest with yourself about your swatch um, because oh, no matter what, swatches can be lying liars. <laughs> we want to prevent them from being lying liars. And so when you stretch out your swatch, if you pin it out to dry, if you drape it instead of laying it flat, you you can affect things and it may only be a little, but we're talking four inches here. The smallest size I wrote the pattern for, I think is a 28. That's seven times the lie that might be in here. So we don't want, we want to minimize the lying. We want to be honest, really know for sure what we're getting. That being said, we're going to knit a sleeve next, which will help us be sure that, um, that we catch any lies really quickly. Um, and I, like I said, I have knit so many sweaters. I have been a knitter for a long time and swatches are still lying liars. <laughs> it's just, all you can do is muddle on as best you can. Remember that knitting is stretchy and flexible, but, um, but don't give it a chance to lie. Do your best to, to eliminate all the lying. Now I've had a number of people ask me questions about altering the size for their bodies. And I talked a little bit about, um, you know, this is, this works for sort of an hourglass shape. Um, I have a thicker waist, so I'm a little more like an apple, but what if you're a pear? I think a pear, adjusting this pattern for pear is great. Um, it's, it's a lot easier than some of the other adjustments because what you can do is start out with the size that's closest to your hip measurement. And we're, this sits at the high hip. Find the measurement in the pattern that works for that. Cast on those numbers, and then you can do your decreases. 
And then if you need to, if you have a smaller waist, you can do an additional set of decreases. We have a nice stretch here between the last decrease and the start of the increases, and you've got some wiggle room here. So you can add another decrease if you want. And then, then you want to find the number that you're going to increase to, and then work from there. And generally, that's, that's easier um, in terms of adjustments. So let's say you start with a 32 inch hip and you decrease but you're only you're only going to want a 28 inch bust so you do your decreases and then let's say you only need to do four increases you can do four instead of eight and you'll still have the effect of increasing for the bust another thing to do is to work all eight bust increases even if you don't want it to be that big then do corresponding double decreases in the same rows under the arms so as not to increase the stitch count this will give you the look you see here while giving you the fit you want. And then your numbers will be straightforward from there on out. Altering the sleeves, um, I had somebody ask if they have bigger arms and they want to do a bigger sleeve but a smaller body. The thing to do then is to look at the difference between the size sleeves that you're going to knit and the size sleeves for your original size and look at the difference in the number of stitches and I think it should be 6 or 12 probably and you'll want to do some additional decreases up at the top. So instead of doing the uh, paired double decreases for the raglan line, you will, not instead of, but you will also do an additional pair of decreases and it would be three or six times. So for the last six or 12 rows, you would do additional decreases so that you get a nice um, collar that fits your body but you've kept the fabric in your sleeves for as long as possible before starting to decrease there. As you can see here on the US 6 needle with this yarn, I'm only getting five and a half stitches per inch. I am getting just about eight rows per inch, which is nice, but that's the easier part to adjust. Now on US 5, I am getting six stitches per inch. Yay, perfect. However, I'm getting nine bows per inch, so I'll need to do a couple more rows between the buttonholes, and I'll also need to think about maybe throwing in an occasional extra even round, sorry, row between uh, raglan decreases in the yoke. One other thing I need to mention is that if you are planning on modifying this pattern, you really do need to think about getting more yarn. If you make longer sleeves, or you lengthen the waist, or increase the bust to a greater extent, you will need more yarn. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking about making mods. So thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Next week, we're gonna talk about casting on. And I have some tips and tricks for casting on and getting going. And if you can't wait, my recommendation is to cast on a sleeve. If you cast on a sleeve, you don't have quite as much knitting that you're committing to. Once you finish the sleeve, you can wash it and it can be your secondary gauge swatch and you can double check that you're really getting gauge before you embark on knitting the body, which is just a lot more stitches. The other great thing about knitting a sleeve first, there's only one more sleeve to knit. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of silly, but those of you who have been knitting for a while, either sweaters or things like socks, anything that there's a second one, you know about second sock slash sleeve slash whatever syndrome. It's real. It's so hard to cast on that second one with the same level of enthusiasm. But if you only have one sleeve to knit before we do the yoke, then you'll be that much more excited. So get that sleeve out of the way and um, join me next time when we will talk all about sleeve knitting and increases and casting on. Until then, thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day and a great sweater knitting experience. Bye. P.S. Thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I now have my vanity URL, so you can find all my uploads at youtube.com slash Kathleen Dames. Yay! And don't forget to tag your projects on Instagram and Twitter with the hashtags KDSweater and SolsticeCarty. I'm at Kathleen Dames on both, so be sure to follow me. At Kathleen Dames is also my Periscope handle, and I broadcast there every weekday. You can watch me record the next episode of the podcast every Monday at about 11 o'clock Eastern Time, if you can't wait until Friday. If you have a question, visit the sweater thread in my Ravelry group, Kathleen Dames Design. There are lots of us working on the Solstice Cardi together, 
So I may have already answered a similar question, or another knitter may have the answer for you before you have a chance to check the forum. Thank you.